Hello, Math 7 students. This is Open Up Resources Unit 3, Lesson 9, Applying Area of a Circles, Part 2. We're going to finish up this lesson today. We left off with us talking about finding the area of each one of these figures, ultimately being able to answer which figure has more area and by how much more. Is it a trick question? Here, these ended up having all of the same area, right? Are these going to be the same area as well? How are we even going to get started talking through these problems. Let's just focus on one figure at a time. Let's look at figure D. How are you even going to find the area of that figure? What would you do? Oren, thanks for getting us started. Okay. Hold on one second. I like what you're saying. Just give me a second to demonstrate that. So we've got this square, which is not drawn perfectly. But we have this square, which is one by one square. So what's the area of this square? One. Yep. And we have two of those, right? What's the area of this one? One by one, which is one. So just taking those two squares into consideration, we so far have an area made up of these squares. The area so far is a total of two, right? Two units squared. Okay, squares done, out of the way, taken care of. What's my next step? Okay, pause there for one more second. You're saying that right now we have these semicircles, but I can just pick up those semicircles and move them over like that, making full circles. Is that right? Okay. Um, and when I do that, you also said that you know the radius of the circle is 1. How do you know that the radius of the circle is 1? Mm -hmm. Great. So a square has a side length of 1, and that side length of 1 also happens to be the radius of 1 as well. So when I move this over, let me group them together. When I move that over, I can see I've got a full circle with a radius of 1 and a second full circle with a radius of 1, which is also demonstrated right there, that radius of 1. Okay, uh, now we know the radius of the circle. Can we find the area? Okay, so... The way we find an area of a circle is the radius squared times pi. Well, the radius squared is going to be 1 times 1, 1 squared, multiplied by pi. Or in other words, 1 times pi or just plain old pi. But how many of those do I have? Two of them. So pi and another pi or a total of 2 pi units squared. Great. So the squares are 2 units. The circles are 2 pi units squared. What do I get when I add those together? Talk amongst yourselves. How am I going to add that together? Okay. Is 2 pi plus 2 equal to 4 pi? Why? I have 2 and I have 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, right? And there's a pi. So is this a true statement? Do you know I had high school students that were making that mistake? Yeah, so we want to be really careful, right? Uh, two things that I want us to take into consideration. You know how sometimes I say uh, in terms of pi, keep your answer in terms of pi? This would be keeping it precise in terms of pi. It's not pretty. We have things that we can't combine. It's not the same as 4 pi. But Go ahead and type it into your calculator. Let's approximate it. What is 2 pi plus 2 approximated in our calculator? Give me at least to the hundredths place of accuracy. Dylan, go ahead. 8.28. You guys agree? Okay. And what are the units? 8.28 what? Yeah, units squared. Exactly. Uh, someone else, part E. How am I going to figure out uh, the area of figure E? Talk me through it. Uh, let's go Zuri. Um, 
Just the ones in the center? Or the whole strip of the squares? Okay, give me one second to catch up. So just like our last group, you started by paying attention to those squares. How many of these squares do we have? Four. And what's the area of each one of these squares? One unit, good. How do you know that the area is one unit for each of these squares? Uh huh. Yeah, they're the same size square as these ones, right? And it tells us here that each of these squares has a side length of one unit. So one times one has an area of one. So each one of these is one. So we have four squares this time. One, two, three, four, each with the, an area of one. So that's going to be four unit squared. Great. Continue on, Zuri. Yeah, it's one quarter of a circle. It's a triangle-y looking piece, but we know that that piece is one quarter of a circle. Okay. Great. So since this is one fourth of a circle, we have four of these that are going to make up one full circle, and we can find the area of that one full circle, right? Because, as Zuri pointed out, the radius of that circle is one because it lines up perfectly with that square, which has a length of one. So, let me see if I can quickly draw this. We have a quarter circle, another quarter circle. This is drawn so perfectly, no one's judging, right? Okay, there's my four quarters making up one full circle with a radius of one. What do we do with that now, Zuri, now that I've got that? Great, one squared times pi, the radius squared multiplied by pi, and one squared times pi is equal to? Pi, exactly, it's equal to pi. Um, finish it up. Because I see that you've taken into account most of it. We're just missing. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Pi divided by 2 works. So we already know that if I have a full circle, we know the area is pi. I don't have a full circle though, I have half of that, so one half pi, or as you said, pi divided by two for that last circle. So what is our total complete area now? We have, this is where it gets to be fun, we have pi, that was this one up here, we have pi divided by two, or one half pi, and our four units squared. What is the total area Two ways that I want you to answer. I want you to answer precisely in terms of pi, keep pi in it, answer precisely in terms of pi, and then also do a calculator um, approximation. How am I going to simplify this? We already agreed that 2 pi plus 2 is not the same as 4 pi, but can I add pi and pi divided by 2? Can I add those parts together? What is that going to be? What is that going to be, Luke? 1 and a half pi, or Here's another way to think about it. You're absolutely right. Pi is a whole pi. Pi halves is another half pi. So that would be the same as three pi halves. Three halves of pi, right? Here's half of a pi, another half of a pi, another half of a pi. I have three halves of pi plus four. And approximate that for me then. And we've written it simplified in terms of pi, but I also want us to have that calculator decimal approximation. Whenever you have it, please let me know what you get. Joshua, go ahead. 
8.71 units squared. So which one had the larger area? That would be E. By how much larger is it? How am I going to answer that question? How much more is the area in figure E than in figure D? What's How do I actually answer that question? Gideon, go ahead. Yep, that's a bigger one. Great, fantastic. And 8.71 minus 8.28, do we get 0 0.43? 0 0.47. All right, double check your work, Luke. Most people agree it's 0 0.43, yeah? All right, so how much bigger is it? 0 0.43? Units squared, you got it, units squared. Nicely done. How'd you guys feel about that problem? I thought it was fun, but I mean, I'm a little bit of a nerd, so who had a good time with those problems? Yeah, look at all you nerds. That was fun, right? Let's see if we can have some more fun. Are you ready for more? We know that E has the larger perimeter, or excuse me, E has a larger area. Which one has the larger perimeter? Figure D or figure E? Go back and talk with your groups. How are we going to attack this problem? I think we have to just be careful about what perimeter means. So discuss with your groups. Which one has the greater perimeter? We're going to pause the recording as students work with their groups. Ready, set, go. Okay, as I mentioned, we need to have a really good understanding of what perimeter actually means. So although we can still see that it's composed of these figures, we have to be careful about what pieces we're calculating. For example, we know to find the perimeter of a square, I would need to add all the sides up together, right? But do I really need to add up this side right here? Is that part of the perimeter? Nope, it isn't. So that's the one thing that we got to be careful with, is that we can't just say, well, the perimeter of a square, of this particular square, is four units, because this part right here isn't counted as part of the perimeter. So what is the perimeter that matters? of this part of that square. Luke? It's the parts that are on the outside. Yep. Exactly. It's just the parts on the outside, just those three parts. So the perimeter of this blue part right here is three units. And this blue part here, same type of thing, one, one, and one, that would be three more units. So just those square pieces, not even the whole entire square, but just those square pieces that are part of the perimeter, is three plus three or six units. Let me try and draw that. All right, and the circle pieces, we can still see, because it's composed of these figures, we can still see that we do have two full circles that we need to find the perimeter of, or in other words, the circumference of, yes? So going back, our focus has been on the area, but how can I find the circumference of those circles? Talk me through that real quick. Go ahead, Oren. Fantastic. So radius is one, but when I'm finding the circumference, I like to use the diameter, and that diameter would be one plus one or two. So the diameter is two, and two multiplied by pi Just trying to draw these pieces here. Okay, two multiplied by pi, so that's going to be two pi for this circle and another two pi for the other circle. Yes? For a total of 2 pi plus 2 pi is equal to what? 4 pi. Good. So remember, I can't do 2 pi plus 2. I can't do 2 pi plus 2, but I can do 2 pi plus 2 pi is 4 pi. And all together then, we end up with wanting to add those together. I have 6 units plus 4 pi units. Please give me an approximation of that. We can keep it precise. That would be 6 plus 4 pi, yes. But what is that decimal approximation of 6 plus 4 pi? Anyone who has it? Gideon, again, you're quick with those calculations. Yeah. 
Yep, I think that's great. 18.57 units. Units or units squared? Units. units, because we're fighting just the perimeter. Great. Okay, let's go continue on with that same thought process here. Just these blue parts, again, I can see I'm not needing the inside parts here. That's not part of that perimeter. So just focusing on the parts that I need, I have this blue part here and this blue part here for a grand total of two plus two or four units. All right, and just like before, I hope that you can see that I have a full circle. Do I? Does this smash together with this make a full circle? No. What is that? That and that together make just half a circle. It takes this and this to make the full complete circle. So a quarter piece and another quarter piece and another quarter piece and another quarter piece, we finally are able to get that full circle. How can I find that circumference of that full circle? Let's you reuse some of those strategies from before. What is that radius going to be? One. So therefore the diameter is going to be two. So if I want to find the circumference of this full circle, that is going to be the diameter multiplied by pi or two pi. What about this part? What do I have left right here? This piece and this piece right here. How much is left there? Luke. That's going to be half a circle, exactly. One half of a circle. We already know that the circumference of a circle of one of these circles is equal to 2 pi. So what's one half of 2 pi? What's one half of 2 pi? I'll wait. You don't need your calculators. Just turn on those thinking caps. What's one half of 2 pi, Tanner? Say that again. Double check. Half of 2. 1 pi, yeah. Half of 2 pi is going to be just one single pi. But now when I add all of them up together, Tanner, what do I get? 3 pi total, exactly. So for 2 pi, I should have done this one in purple. 2 pi plus another pi plus 4 units. Or in other words, 3 pi plus 4. And the decimal approximation of that, 3 pi plus 4. Thank you, Joshua. 13.42 units or units squared? Were you surprised by that, folks? That this one had the greater perimeter, even though it had less area? Okay, I was surprised. I think stuff like that is cool. Okay. Yes, that is true. Okay. Uh, I really, really, really like this problem. Running the track revisited. This looks familiar, doesn't it? Okay, here's the difference. Before, we were finding the circumference and the perimeters of different pieces. Now, let's read through it. The field inside a running track is made up of a rectangle. Remember that rectangle. Let me move that. That rectangle is 84.39 meters long. So that rectangle, 84.39 meters long and 73 meters wide. Together with a half circle on each end, and it says the running lanes are 9.76 meters wide all the way around. So what is the area of the running track that goes around the field? Notice, I don't necessarily want the area of the grass that's inside. I want the area of this running track. The whole entire thing. Form a plan with your groups. We're going to finish this problem without the students. Had to end class, students are gone, so it's going to be quiet as we finish this. But we need to remember on this problem that we need to, just like the others, we need to decompose it into other more simple figures. First things first, understand that we are not finding, as I mentioned before, the area of the grass. We're finding the area of the track. So that track is made up of this straight piece here. I'm going to stop scribbling just so that we can see that measurement still. It's made up of another straight piece here. And when I look at that shape that I've just highlighted, we can see that that shape is really truly just a rectangle. A rectangle whose dimensions are, with the help of this measurement down here, 84.39. 
and with the help of this measurement right here, that rectangle has a height of 9.76. So, with that information, can we find the area of a rectangle? Yes, that's actually going to be very easy. And notice that we have two of those. So, how much track are we going to need to lay here? How much here? Whenever I find the area of this, I'm going to multiply it by two. Let's go ahead and do that now. When we're finding the area of a rectangle, we simply multiply the base times the height. So, 9.76 times 84.39. Multiply that together. And we have an area of 800. 23.6464 units of measure. It was meters times meters, so that's going to be meters squared. But remember, we actually have two of these rectangles. Right? So we've got two of those. That has now been calculated. Now, again, it's all about composing those figures. So if I can pick up this piece and move it on over here, let me bring that to the front we can see that we also have just a circle. When I take this half circle, move it on over here, we can see that we have a half circle. Here's what we have, here's what we need to be paying attention to. I need to find the area of this circle, but when I find the area of that circle that I'm trying to outline, notice that it's going to include even this green area here, and we don't want that. So when I find the area of this circle, I then need to find the area of this inner circle as well so that I can cut it out. Just like you build a donut, but then you cut out the center, it's the same thing. We've got our whole circle, but we're gonna cut out that middle piece. So let's envision that. In order to find the area of this larger, greater circle, we need to know what the radius is. That's gonna be a little bit more challenging because it's not giving us the radius. Let's take a look at the measurement that it is giving us. It says from here to here is 73 meters. So again, that's going to be from here to here. That's 73 meters. And that's great. That's the diameter of our inner circle, the part of our donut that we're going to be cutting out. But that doesn't help us for the larger circle. This is where this comes in to play here. Remember, the width of the track is 9.76, so this is an extra 9.76. This is an extra 9.76. So if I'm looking for the diameter so that I can eventually find the radius of this entire circle, we need to understand that that is the 73 plus the extra 9.76 up here plus the extra 9.76 down here as well. Altogether, that is going to give me the large diameter or the diameter for that larger circle. Let's type that in, 73 plus 9.76 plus 9.76 is equal to 92.52. So the diameter of that large circle is 92.52. I don't really want the diameter I need the radius in order to calculate the area. So I need just half of that. So I will divide that by two. Again, the diameter divided by two is equal to the radius. So that diameter of 92.52 divided by two is equal to the radius, and that is equal to 46.26. So the radius of the larger circle this is where the color coding really, really helps. That radius of the large circle is equal to 46.26. With that in mind, let's find the area of that whole large circle. We take the area, excuse me, to find the area, we take the radius, square it, and multiply it by pi. So I'm going to take that radius of 46.26 squared and multiply that by pi. in my calculator, let's just go to uh, two decimal places. That is going to be 6,722.97 units squared. But again, what I have found is the area of this whole 
entire circle. Since I don't want that green part, the part that's going to be grass, I don't want that to be calculated in there. I now need to refigure what is the area of this smaller circle so that I can subtract it from our original area that we just found. So going back to this, let's figure out the radius of this smaller circle. I'm going to focus over here on this part since it's got less clutter and less uh, writing over there. Notice this small circle has a diameter of 73 from edge to edge through the center a diameter of 73. So knowing that the diameter is 73 I can divide that 73 by 2 to find the radius. 73 divided by 2 is equal to 36.5 and that would be in the meters, so 36.5 meters. Now we know the radius of that smaller circle, so again from here to here, the radius of the smaller circle is 36.5. Now we're going to take that 36.5, square it, and multiply it by pi so that we can find the area of the smaller circle. 36.5 squared multiplied by 5 is equal to 4,185.39. Again, just to two decimal places, rounding to the nearest hundredths place. So the large circle is 6,722.97. Subtract the 4,185.39, and that is going to give us uh, the area of just the track, but just for those circle pieces. And so that is equal to 2,537.58. That is going to take care of all of this half circle. And remember, this half circle really truly has just been moved over. So it will also take care of this half circle as well. Don't forget about our two rectangular pieces here. Those two rectangular pieces are 823.646 meters squared, and we have two of them, right? So this is, I'm going to come on down here, 823.6464. We have two of those, so I'm just going to take that and multiply it by two. Don't forget about the area of the circular pieces of our track. And let's add that together, 823.6464 times 2 plus 2,537.58. And we have a grand total area of just the track as 4,184.87. Just choosing to round to the nearest hundredths place, this is going to be in meters squared. That's pretty much as hard as it gets. And even then, as long as you can decompose that image into other figures that are more familiar, then you're going to be just fine. So let's move on. Let's summarize. All of this, we have just been practicing the area of a circle. We can find the area of a circle as long as we know the radius. The formula is area is equal to pi times the radius squared. So as long as we know the radius, we can find the area of a circle. This is just an example. If a radius is 10 centimeters, then we know 10 squared is 100, and we multiply that by pi for 100 pi. This is what we would get if I say write your answer in terms of pi. But we can also type that into our calculator and get an approximation, and it says here that would be 314 centimeters squared. Sometimes that numerical approximation can be helpful. One of the things we also observed today is finding uh, the area of pieces of a circle. For example, this circle, we can find the area of the circle, and so when that circle is cut into three equal pieces, we can then take that area and divide it by three and know the area of a piece of a circle as well. We did that <clears throat> in these examples. When we realized that four pieces make a full circle, we recognize that that area of this is going to be one-fourth of the area of the full circle.
Let's move on to the cooldown. You guys have probably seen these kinds of building blocks before. With a building block like this, we have just one side of that building block shown. Notice that it is a full rectangular block, but there is this semicircle that is cut out at the bottom. Find the area of this side of that block. So what do we do? Notice composing and decomposing these figures. I have a rectangle and I can find the area of this whole entire rectangle. We find the area of a rectangle by multiplying the length and the width. So nine times 4.5. Nine times 4.5 is equal to 40.5. This is going to be centimeters squared. Here's the challenge though. We don't have that full rectangular block. We have the semicircle piece that's cut out. So this amount is cut out. That's half of a circle. That means I can cut out a full circle and then just divide it by two. What's the area of that circle? That area, well, let's see, it gives us the diameter. When I want to find area, I need to use the radius. So the diameter divided by two gives me a radius of 2.5. So the radius of this circle is 2.5. That's 2.5 squared multiplied by pi. Well, that will give me the area of this whole entire circle. So 2.5 squared times pi. Again, I am just going to round here. That is going to be equal to 19.63 centimeters squared. But that's the whole circle. I didn't cut out the whole circle. I really only just cut out half of that circle. So if I know the area of the whole entire circle, I can simply take that and divide it by two and that is going to give me the area of the half circle that was cut out, 9.82 centimeters squared. If you're wondering why these aren't matching up, I'm just reusing the answer in the calculator. So in my calculator, I don't have just 19.63. I have 19.63494508. So I'm actually just taking that big long decimal, not the one that's written down, but the one that's stored in my calculator and dividing it by two, keeping my answer precise. 9.82 centimeters. So we have this whole rectangular block, which is 40.5 centimeters squared and we cut out half of this circle, so we're subtracting 9.82 centimeters squared. And that gives us the area of this block, the side of the block is 30.68 square centimeters. That is it for today's lesson. Your practice problems are the lesson nine practice problems. Um, it's a lot like this, what we have already seen. Just know that when you get to problem six, all parts A, B, and C, this is kind of a spiral review. We're gonna be reviewing proportional relationships. So don't be thrown off by that. It is a spiral review and it is not related to circles, but it's good to review that with our RISE testing coming up. Uh, so lesson nine practice problems. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.